So I just spent um, a great deal of time organizing our race station over here because all our crap was just like piled in an overwhelming mess. And we have two February races, so I thought it would be better if everything was nice and organized and easy to get to. And I figured since it is nice and organized and easy to get to, I would just do a brief overview of some things um, that we have in our go-to race station or also also long run station as well, I suppose. Um, we do have a lot of videos that are gonna be coming out. Um, some of them we still have to shoot this week. Some of them we're working on editing. So a lot of the things I'm gonna touch on like really fast right now are gonna have like whole videos on the topic that are coming soon. But anyway, field trip for anyone who is interested. All right, here she is. Okay, so up here we've got the uh, the Roctane. We, the majority of her calories actually come from Roctane. She does like a bajillion, I don't know, like 6,000 calories or something like that. Who even knows? You'll have to ask her. Um, she just does tons and tons of Roctane. That ends up being her primary calorie source, which is not how most people do it, but it works for her. I use a little bit of Tailwind, but I cannot tolerate too, too much of it. So I'm like a Tailwind in small doses kind of person. This right here is one of my Tailwind bags left over from a previous race. And actually what I did is I took a portion control Ziploc bag. So I took one of these, these portion control snack bags. I guess it's not technically Ziploc. I guess it's cheap Target knockoff brand. Um, I took that, I cut it in half, and then I actually used my food saver to seal it. So this is completely sealed. Now, by no means am I saying go out and buy a food saver if you don't have one, but just if you do happen to have uh, anything that will seal plastic bags, I think that's a cool use for it. I don't have to worry about my bags breaking open. Lee doesn't bother with that. She just tapes hers shut and that seems to work fine for her as well. Uh, here we have, I think this is the non-caffeinated spring, caffeinated spring. Um, spring is the go-to gel for, for both of us. Um, it's really easy on the stomach, it's not too sweet. And this, you're almost getting like double, I think you are getting double the calories here than a typical gel. So they tend to be more expensive than your average gel, but you're also getting more calories out of it without that much more weight. Yeah, 250 calories in that baby right there. We also like the Huma gels, especially the, um, the lemon Humas. Whenever you hear us talk about crack gels, that's these right here, the Cliff Double Espresso uh, gels right here. We call them crack gels just because of their caffeine. It's 100 milligrams of caffeine. It'll give you a little boost if you're falling asleep at night. We've got the Muir gels here. Um, I like these, but I really can't tolerate them very well later in a race for sure. I can't tolerate them a whole lot during races just in general. Like I might have like one or two, but I certainly can't fuel my race on them. They're just a little bit thick. And also if it's cold... They are, it's, it's hard to get out. Uh, over here, we have all the, the hand sanitizers and alcohol wipes. We actually, we use these in our foot care kits, which there's a whole video on that that's gonna be coming on how we make our foot care kits, but that's what that is for. Here is the everything salt. Um, we were using these salt sticks here. Lee wanted to switch over to um, the Himalayan salt here. She got these um, little jewelry bags from the craft store and puts the, the salt in there and carries it in her vest. I tried that for the last couple of races and I'm not sure that I like it any more than the salt sticks. So I think for this next one, I'm actually going back to this, but I think she's gonna continue with that. So either way that works. Right here, this is a, this was actually a breakthrough for us. So Right here, you have the batteries next to our headlamp stash, right? And headlamps take AAA batteries. And what we were doing is um, we didn't want to 
reuse any batteries that had possibly been used. And we'd come home from like a race. I'm sure there were like many AAAs that hadn't even gone into a headlamp, but we just assumed they were used and we don't want to start a race at like a nighttime. We don't want to start at nighttime with a headlamp that has used batteries in it, right? So we just had this like giant bag of like AAA batteries that we were afraid to use. And it was the dumbest thing ever. I picked up a few weeks ago, I picked up a, a battery tester at Home Depot for like $7. So now we're able to actually test the batteries. So this, these are half good batteries. We're not gonna use these in a headlamp starting off the nighttime in a race because then we're gonna have to change batteries soon and that's gonna hold us up. And here, these batteries passed the test. So now we are not wasting so many AAA batteries, which is fantastic. Uh, headlamp stash right here. Um, we've been using the Black Diamonds. I do not like the Black Diamond. I'm actually, I've not been very happy with it. I find myself um, slowing down at night, not because I'm tired often, but because I can't see as well as I'd like. Um, when it's full bright, when I very first change of the batteries, it's good, but it just dims so quickly. So I am in the market for something else. And I actually just... Uh, at Home Depot the other day, I was there for something else, and I saw this, like, husky headlamp. It's, like, 500 lumens right here for, like, 17 bucks. And just sometimes, you know, it's funny how you buy a cheap product and it ends up working. So I figured, what the hell, like, this next race is, um, it, it's loops. You have so much drop bag access. So I figured that would be a good time to, like, test out this, this husky light just for funsies and see if... You see how it holds up next to my much more expensive black diamond headlamp. But that is something I will be working on sorting in the next uh, couple of months here. Uh, this is like kind of the pain control cube right here. This is more like stuff you're going to probably rub on after the race. Or tiger balm you could rub on during the race. Sunscreen, bug spray... That could be important depending where you're going. This is the Everything Electrolytes Cube right here. Um, I have actually taken to, I don't even know how you say this, Nun, Noon, I don't know. I should probably know how to pronounce the brand. So what I started doing um, one or two races ago, because I don't do so well with the, um, the Roctane, the Tailwind, all of that, for electrolyte purposes, I started doing this uh, noon or none, whatever the heck it's called. Um, I started putting this in my water for uh, between aid stations and to try to get some electrolytes in with something that's a little bit easier on my stomach than some of these other drinks. The important thing you have to keep in mind if you do this is this is not fuel. It barely has any calories. Um, one of the women in our project when she was doing her first 50K was using this stuff, um, thinking it was fuel. And it's like, I think there's like five calories. I don't even know. Let's see if I can find it. Cal 25 calories in a pack of these. Okay, 25 calories is going to be like <sighs> gone when you're running 100 miles. It's not going to get you anywhere. So that's not fuel. It's just for electrolyte purposes. And for me, it helps when I can't take in these like super sugary drinks. It's a, it's a little bit more of like a salty it's a little more balanced for me. Um, you might have seen my post earlier. I have my dental hygiene space here. I put mouthwash in these old fireball bottles. And I have these little wisp uh, disposable toothbrushes here. It is very important to me now. It fig I mean, it took a few races to figure this out. But at this point, I know that. I am going to have a better race if I brush my teeth. I know that sounds like ridiculous, but really things get sweet. I get queasy. And then you got the, yeah, the sugar teeth, you know, it's just so gross. Like all that stuff on there, all that sugar, when all I want is to not taste sugar anymore and being able to brush my teeth actually makes a huge difference in getting rid of the queasy. Over here, we get the butt paste. Um, Butt paste I've actually used on my feet before during a wet race, but um, it's particularly good too on um, chafed spots after after the race. Uh, and then here we have uh, Lee's little 
Myler ponchos that she made the other day. And then in the back, I'm not going to take it out right now, but there's also hand warmers. Um, some races, if you're going for a cold race, you might want to pack hand warmers. We packed hand warmers for um, Outlaw 2021 single digit temperatures. Brought those in the drop bag. And then this is the, nice shining right on it. This is the uh, anti chafing cube right here. So we've got all sorts of different stuff in here. We have a whole video coming up on that, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But right here we have like three different products to prevent chafing to put on the body. This right here is my little Jin Jin spot right here. And these Jin Jin candies are awesome. They're so great. Um, I keep these in my vest at all times. I try to keep extra on me because I will give them to sick people on the trail when I pass them. You're gonna pass people puking on the trail. You're gonna feel bad. You're gonna wish you could do something. You can, you can offer them a gin gin. Um, I actually helped one girl feel better with these. She thanked me. And these help me feel better very often when my stomach starts to get a little bit like, oh, what are you doing? Why do you keep doing this? We hate you. Do I have anything else exciting in here? Let's take a look. All right, over here we've got the Tums. I take a Tums. Lee taught me this. I take a Tums every four hours, no matter what. I take it more than that if I'm having uh, queasy stomach issues. That helps a lot when you're taking in all that sweet stuff. We have um, these energy mints right here. They're basically caffeine mints. I don't like them, but I usually keep a few on me in my vest during a race in case of an emergency. These, however, <laughs> Um, I will actually take these, uh, these are Starbucks Vias, so let me show you. They come in these little packs right here. I like to keep at least one of these on me for an emergency in my pack. I thought it was super gross the first time that somebody told me they did this, but in a real, real emergency, if I am like falling asleep on my feet, I will open this and just dump it in my mouth and squirt water down. That would probably make a lot of people puke but for whatever reason, I could handle it. Or you can ask for uh, hot water at an aid station. And I should be embarrassed for myself again, but I am not. I, um, I have poured these in Coke before at an aid station. <laughs> so I have had like coffee Coke. 100 milers make you do really weird things. So that is oh, that. Right back over here, I got my Lenny's and Larry's stash. I have trouble getting these down later in the race, but for early on in the race, they are awesome. They've got over 400 calories per cookie. Um, and then same thing with these, these Bobo bars right here. These are really good for early in the race. I have trouble getting them down later in the race, but um, they're a little less than Lenny and Larry's, but close to 400 calories. And I do, I, I can enjoy those early on. Okay, over here, I showed you the portion control uh, baggies we have. Also these snack baggies come in handy. And then these large, I will show you in a minute, these very large bags are for making the drop bags themselves. Up here, we've got our race water bottles. Um, you will see, and Lee is the one who gave me this idea when I first started off. Here is the list of all the aid stations for the last race she did and their mileage points. And uh, same thing, my last race was Cloud Splitter. So these were all the, uh, the Cloud Splitter uh, aid stations here. This was the mileage that each of them, that, that each aid station was at. Um, this was going to be like my, if I'm, if I was going faster than this. So I'm going to show you how I do my pace charts later. Um, I went to cloud splitter injured. So part of my strategy was to make sure I wasn't going too fast. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going any quicker than these times right here. I wanted to be ahead of these times though. So this gave me something to go by where I wanted to fall between, this is the running time of the whole race, right? So like by 15 hours in, I wanted to be here or I didn't want to be there any sooner, I should say. 
Um, and then I have the cutoff times over here, but I'm gonna do a whole video later about how I do this and kind of how I decide uh, which paste numbers to to put on here. But we're, and, and Lee's gonna do a video as well so that you guys have two different perspectives on how we do that. This right here has changed my life. This is Musher's Secret. My very first 100 miler attempt, uh, Shawnee Hills, I don't even remember what state that was in. Um, it was so hot and it, it, not, it wasn't overly hot, but it was really, really, really humid, making it feel hot. And then it rained. So it rained and was just super, super humid and super moist the whole time. Um, I was not adequately prepared at all as far as foot care goes. Like, I think I would have had foot problems even if it didn't rain with how little prepared I was. But I got horrible, horrible trench foot at that race. Um trench foot it can be extremely extremely painful it feels like a bunch of blisters on the bottom of your feet just bursting open but then when you look at your feet there's no there's no blister where you feel like where you thought it bursted open it's just some of the weirdest like nerve sensations um excruciatingly painful okay because i damaged my feet so bad at shawnee hills it took and then <laughs> I say just because of that. And then because I ran like a hundred miler at like every six to eight weeks afterwards, it took about six or seven months for that trench foot to fully heal. Every time I raced, I became very prone to it at that point because it never fully healed. I kept having reoccurring issues with it. Um, like I did finish the bear, but at the end of the bear, it was for like the last 15 miles, it was so painful. Um, blood rock, I finished blood rock, but same thing, like last 15, 20 miles, just excruciatingly painful trench foot. I didn't know what to do. It was one of those really, really frustrating things where it's like, why does this keep happening to me? And how do I stop it from happening? And so the way I have stopped it from happening is our foot care kits, which we're going to go over with you in a separate video, how to make the foot care kits. But this for me is the, um, Musher's secret is the secret in those foot care kits. Like this has literally changed everything for me ever since I started using it. I have not had issues. And the way we found it actually was Lee was outside one day and saw somebody putting it on their dog's feet, on their dog's paws, and she asked them about it. So uh, she asked them about it with like my feet in mind. And then she's like, maybe order some. So it's actually for like sled dogs. They use this on sled dogs. Paws. Uh, it has worked wonders. Wonders. In fact, this is a brand new tube that just got here today because if I have two February races, we need to make sure that we're stocked up on them. On the musher secret. Okay, so that is that. Um, the other thing in here, in the our little foot section, is tough foot. This is for spraying on the bottom of your feet for the weeks leading up to the race. Um, it, I do think it helped like toughen up my feet, though I haven't used it in a while now. I got that out of the uh, the book, Fixing Your Feet recommended that, and that helped too, I do believe. And then over here, we just have a bunch of, uh, a bunch of fireball bottles. Um, and these could be used either for whiskey or we're dry January right now. Mouthwash, or Lee uses them for hand sanitizer for her foot care kits, too. And then over here at the bottom, we have the reject gels. We've had those gels for over two years because they're gross. Um, just some bars. Justin's, we gotta get some more of these, but they have some good stuff. They have different flavors, and these work really well. I have difficult time with them late in a later in a race, but I like them early in a race, and it's 200 calories for pouch, so you can kind of use them like a gel. And our chapsticks. Uh, that's about it. These right here are for our race board. I don't think I've showed you guys the race. We go on a field trip to the race board. Let's do it. Here we go. To the race board! All right, this is our magnetic race board. And we have these like magnet dry erase things on here. And this 
So right up here, <laughs> these uh, I'm move this yoga ball. These are all the races that we would like to do, and it's not even a full list. I'm sure uh, we've been slacking on keeping up with putting putting them on. And a lot of these are international, so we had to kind of put the brakes on that because of COVID. Even now, it's kind of scary to travel internationally. You don't know if you're going to end up stuck somewhere or whatever. Uh, but here's like 2022, so we've got Outlaw and Run Love It in February, Cocodona in May, Fat Dog August, Swiss Peaks 360 in September, No Business in October, uh, Lugaroo December, and that's all we have on the list so far, though I suspect there will be more. I think somebody mentioned that they're going back to Cloud Splitter, which I think means we'll probably go back to Cloud Splitter. We'll have to see. Uh, 2023 is not solid yet. I actually think that's going to probably have to be rearranged because things got... We're not registered for any of that, and things kind of got moved around for us. So 2023 will probably be be different but uh yeah this is our race board and then anytime uh we've been slacking but in theory uh anytime one of us finds a race that we want to do we're supposed to put it on one of these little these little things here and stick it on the board with uh the information about what time of year it is and such so that we could organize accordingly and then the very last thing i said i'd come back to um, these bags here. I'll just show you how we use these um, these giant bags are typically our drop bags, right? So like if I'm doing the, a course that doesn't repeat itself much, um, either like an out and back or a point to point, um, we use just these bags right here. And then here it's got let me turn All right, so it's got bib number up here, my name down here, and then the name of the aid station uh, right there. And that usually works. Um, sometimes we tape two of these together if we need a bigger bag. The Outlaw, since it's just going to be two drop bags on a loop course, I'm probably going to just have like a big duffel bag and then have some um, smaller bags within that duffel bag so that I'm a little bit organized with what to do. Uh, for each stop, I'll probably have a, a pretty good idea of which times I want to actually stop and hit my drop bag. I'll kind of know that ahead of time and then have things broken down into this bag is for the first time I stop. This bag is for the second time I stop. Um, because if it's all just thrown in there, there's a good chance I'm going to miss something that I actually wanted to grab. And I don't want to do that. So... Either I need to break it down that way or have like a list that I could refer to, but then there's the chance of losing the list. I don't know. We'll see. I'll probably wing it as far as how I want to do that, but it's going to be one of those two ways to make sure that I'm not forgetting something important just by having all the crap thrown into the big duffel bag together. I want to have some idea of what to grab when. Um, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the field trip around the living room.